Hey guys, still here and welcome back to the German campaign for Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, episode 9. It might not be that many more episodes, because at the moment the British have been blockaded by us. The German Empire blockades the British Empire, and that means that they're also suffering from economic stagnation. On top of that, um, they weren't doing too well with their fleet, since I have 45 ships and they have 22. So, um, how long is this going to drag on? Well, um, until we really run into <laughs> more transports. Until we run into another fleet. And I hope to use the new light cruisers for that. Unfortunately, we only have the three torpedo boats against a couple of transports, a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser. Now, I've been getting various comments about engagements with transports. Because if you kill the transports, then the game goes, nope, sorry, failed the mission. Um, if you kill the heavy cruiser and the light cruiser and whatever other escorts the transports might have, the game then says, you've won. Oh, uh, but the transports escaped. It doesn't make any sense, and I think it's something that is going to get fixed. Anyway, um, just for all time's sake, let's do another run with these torpedo boats against a couple of cruisers. Now, I'm hoping that some of these are the newer torpedo boats, because they are more fun to use. Uh, the 31 isn't... I think these are all... Yeah, these are all the older type. They only got two tubes. Enemy west. Very good. West we shall go. And let's just quickly dispose of some cruisers. I think the heavy cruiser can be sunk by two torpedoes. I'm not sure about the light cruiser. They generally need a bit more convincing. Um, since they generally have more bulkheads. Here, sink 75% of transports. Right? I don't get it. I don't get it. Still, I want to sink more of their ships so that their power projection goes down even further and that we can successfully continue that blockade. But I think the British are mostly in a death spiral. They cannot build any new ships because they don't have the money for that. They cannot really get more money because they don't have the ships. So they're pretty miss... Well, they're pretty stuck in their uh, current position. Now, let's see about the... Oh, this is the light cruiser, actually. That's not necessarily ideal. But we'll just have to kind of do a drive-by. I was really hoping to find the other one first. Crap. Juno is probably going to send torpedo. Oh, there you go. Hello. We'll just do a little donut there. Pretend we're American and then potentially just veer out of that turn and go directly for the Kent. And that way, the S31 in its current donut formation is basically drawing all attention. And, oh, there you go. Now the S18 is considered a threat by the Juno. Unfortunately, the Juno is not really considered a threat by me because she doesn't really have the ability to fire any more torpedoes. Of course, that doesn't preclude her from not being able to do damage. Wow, we've hit her and penned her with a two-inch gun? Well, that's pretty impressive. Oh! Juno has other issues. That could sink the Juno. That torpedo is going to be a bit of annoying. Good lord, Juno. Dude. That was terrible. Torpedo away against the Kent? Oh, she's not done yet. Dude. The Kent is definitely getting a lot of damage in on the S-18 and unfortunately dodges the torpedo that was launched by the 18. How are you not dead? More interestingly, potentially, how much armament do you still have? Okay, so she popped her turret that was over there. Look at that bow. There was a turret here. And I think they just popped two turrets amidships. No, one. And then one there. But how many flash fires did she have? One, two, three, four. Four flash fires. And the ship is... Well, I mean, it's not perfectly alright, but... Buoyancy is going up again. She seems fine. Oh god, the Kent suddenly got very accurate. 
Seeing as I didn't have the torpedo launcher up and running. Oh no, did you just torpedo the light cruiser? You did, and of course the Juno dodges that. So, this whole encounter is not going nearly as well as I'd hoped. All I can hope for is that the Kent will sink, but I kind of doubt it. Oh, dude! Calm down. Ow. Oh, there you go. So the Kent is down. And the Juno, despite its tremendous amounts of damage, has only been down to two flooded compartments? With that much extreme heat going on on that ship, I'm surprised that they're still alive. But then again, we've seen a transport earlier in the campaign. And that transport also got a metric ton of uh, flash fires on, well, all sorts of little armament. I think it was two and three, potentially a four inch gun. And it survived. I'm not going to say it was perfectly fine, because it was badly hurt. But overall... It survived all those flash fires. I suppose what I'm really looking for is an ammo detonation. Because that's something that's going to really do a lot of structural damage. Right now, we're basically hoping to flood it out. And that we can reload that torpedo launcher. For the next campaign that I already have some plans for, which is going to be the British one, I'm going to not use any torpedo boats. Because they are just... Oh shit, you still have torpedoes. Because uh, they're just too strong. Torpedoes on torpedo boats can do such an extreme amount of damage to ships which are, well, invariably larger than they are. And at the same time, they can soak up a level of damage which is pretty unparalleled. The amount of damage for their size or for their tonnage that these things can take is, I think, far, far too generous. Unfortunately, the 31 doesn't look like it's going to be much use, so that puts a lot of pressure on the 12. Even though, since I've already lost one, I potentially will lose two torpedo boats. Oh, never mind, we're doing the magic pumping thing again. Um, even though I mostly suspect that the loss of the heavy cruiser, yeah... The loss of the heavy cruiser many times over paid for the loss of one, potentially two torpedo boats. So we're fine. We're fine. We're just going to creep up on this thing. And put it out of its misery. With your little uh, Jeune Ecole <laughs> torpedo boat fleet that I have. I don't like the Juno heading away like this. 7.9 knots. Let's increase. I thought I wasn't able to do that, but they fixed the engines. Oh, she's flooding again. Courtesy of the two-inch gun on the uh, S-12. A seasoned crew. Very nice. Let's hope the torpedo launcher is still functional. Yep, it is. Still rotating. I hope that we're going to hit this somewhere amidships. There you go. Where a torpedo impacts is not really something I can dictate. It's something that I would like to see as a quality of life upgrade to the game. Because being able to dictate where a torpedo is going to hit, for example, I want this thing to hit in the bow, that would be very much an improvement over I'm just going to launch a torpedo and hope that it does something. All right, let's see what other battles we can find. After a little bit more fighting here and there, just some very, very small clashes between ships, I suddenly get this. British Empire's head of Admiralty leader, Frederick Richards, is suddenly replaced by Rosalind Wemmis. His recent failures and overall poor management must have been the cause. Um, I just got the better out of him. I'm not sure if this is actually going to do anything, but apparently they have a different leader, and I suppose that that might later in the game actually have something happen. They might have had, for example, a bonus that they got from the previous leader, from Frederick, and now that bonus has swapped to something else. Maybe Rosalind, for example, is more of a fan of lightships. When it comes to their ships, they have been um, seriously demolished. I have six battleships, they have four. Oh, sorry, they have two. I have four heavy cruisers, they have one. The only class where they outdo me is light cruisers, because I have five and they have seven. But when it comes to torpedo boats, uh, mine have been vastly more effective than theirs. So far, though, it doesn't seem like there were a lot of um, incidents 
a lot of battles, mostly potentially because the British fleet is being kept at anchor. And that's actually pretty good, because it gives me the opportunity to get the 4,000 ton limit for the heavy cruiser up. As well as eventually researching a destroyer, and I was working on something else. Yeah, engines. But I don't know what I am working on, <laughs> nor how long that's going to take. Uh, a lighter reciprocating system. Okay, a little bit less engine weight. That's good, it's gonna make my ships heavier. Oh, the British have a revolution. Unrest became uncontrollably high. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, wow. This is crazy. This guy was in office for a month, I think. And now, because they don't trust Ross Ledwemis, <laughs> due to low naval prestige, he's immediately relieved from duty and expelled from the country. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that was a bit of an anticlimactic end, wasn't it? Oh, no. I built only eight ships. This is what I built over the course of the war. So not the start of the campaign, but over the course of the war. I built a total of 74 ships, the vast majority being torpedo boats with a total of 118,000 tons. I lost 15,000 tons, but they <laughs> lost... 143,000 tons. Oof. They also lost about 10 times the number of crew. What I don't get is how in the span of three and a half years the game considers this almost times 10 amount of kill death ratio a minor victory. What do I need to do to make sure that I get a, I don't know, an outstanding victory or a flawless victory or something like that? Because when it comes to cost effectiveness, I'd say that the torpedo boats, well, pulling their weight doesn't really cover it. They hit so high above their weight class that it's ridiculous how quickly this thing ended and how fast they were able to diminish the British fleet. Anyway, I suppose that that's the end of the campaign. So coming soon, the new campaign, or rather a new campaign, in which I'll be the British and I'll be using most likely battleships. Lots and lots of battleships. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon for more of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts.